A city for 130,000 people doesn't just appear, it has to be built. But what if the ground it's built on is hiding a dangerous secret? This is the story of the $2 billion Providence Ripley Master Plan in Australia, an ambitious project to construct a new city from scratch. To make it happen, engineers had to move 4.2 million cubic meters of earth. They used controlled explosions to blast through 350,000 cubic meters of solid rock, an amount that could fill a skyscraper. But the real danger wasn't the rock they could see. It was what they couldn't. Underneath the quiet valley lay a hidden network of old mining tunnels threatening to collapse into sinkholes, and even forgotten unexploded bombs from military training days. How do you build a city on land that's not just set to collapse, but is also a literal minefield? Before the first bulldozer arrived, the Ripley Valley was a quiet stretch of land between the growing cities of Brisbane and Ipswich in Queensland. For decades, planners saw its potential. As Australia's cities grew, the government needed a solution to avoid endless suburban sprawl. They needed to build smarter, creating entire communities with jobs, schools and parks all in one place. The Ripley Valley, covering a massive 4,680 hectares, was the perfect blank canvas. To put that size into perspective, it's large enough to fit over 700 professional sports stadiums. In 2004, a special task force was formed to imagine what a future city here could look like. Their work led to a landmark decision. On October 8, 2010, the Queensland government officially declared the Ripley Valley a priority development area. This declaration was like flipping a switch. It meant the normal rules of development were streamlined to fast-track the project. This wasn't going to be a slow crawl of individual housing estates. It was going to be a coordinated, top-down creation of a new urban centre. The vision was huge, a 30 to 40 year project to build 48,750 homes for a population of 131,000 people. Two major international developers stepped in to lead the charge. The Japanese powerhouse Sekisui House began work on a community called Echo Ripley and the ambitious Ripley Town Centre. At the same time, another developer, Stockland, took control of the largest single community within the valley, a 670-hectare site they named Providence. The $2 billion price tag was just the beginning of one of Australia's most complex engineering challenges. But before they could build up, they first had to deal with the ground down below. The scale of the earthworks here is difficult to comprehend. The primary contractor, SEE Group, was tasked with moving 4.2 million cubic meters of earth. Imagine the largest cargo ships in the world. This amount of dirt could fill over 20 of them from top to bottom. This wasn't just about leveling the ground. It involved carefully sculpting the landscape, creating the right elevations for roads, drainage and housing pads, all while managing different types of soil and rock. A huge part of this earth was solid sandstone, in these areas, bulldozers were useless. The engineering solution was blasting. Over 350,000 cubic meters of hard rock had to be fractured and removed using controlled explosions. This process is a science in itself. Geotechnical engineers first drill a precise pattern of holes into the rock. Each hole is then loaded with a specific amount of explosives. The detonation is timed in milliseconds, creating a sequence of blasts that directs the force downward, shattering the rock efficiently, while minimizing ground vibrations and noise for any nearby residents. This blasted rock wasn't wasted. It was crushed on site and reused as a base material for the new roads, saving money and reducing the need for trucks to haul in new materials. With the ground shaped, the next step was to lay the city's veins and arteries the hidden network of pipes that makes modern life possible. Engineers installed 11.3 kilometers of sewer pipes and a staggering 12.6 kilometers of stormwater drainage. But this drainage system was designed with a modern philosophy. Instead of just funneling rainwater away into concrete pipes as quickly as possible, the project was designed to be a water-sensitive city. This means using engineering to mimic nature. They built swales, which are shallow vegetated channels and large retention basins. When it rains, these systems slow the water down, allowing it to be naturally filtered by soil and plants. 
This prevents flash flooding, recharges the groundwater, and creates healthier green spaces throughout the community. On top of this underground network, the skeleton of the city began to take shape. Over 46,000 square meters of flexible pavement were laid for the initial road network. This wasn't just a random collection of streets. It was a carefully planned hierarchy, from quiet residential cul-de-sacs to wider collector roads that would eventually feed into major highways. The success of the entire project is tied to this transport planning. The goal is to prevent the gridlock that plagues many suburbs. This includes future upgrades to major arteries like the Centenary Highway and, most importantly, the planned Ipswich to Springfield rail line, a critical piece of public transport that will connect the new city to the wider region. Without it, the valley risks becoming a car-dependent island. But a modern city needs more than just physical connections, it needs digital ones. A fiber-optic network was laid to every single home. This digital backbone is now considered as essential as water or electricity, providing residents with high-speed internet required for working from home, education and entertainment. This forward-thinking infrastructure is a key selling point, making the new community competitive in an increasingly online world. However, the most unique engineering philosophy wasn't about pipes or roads. It was a Japanese concept that would define the heart of the new city. It's one thing to build houses, but how do you build a soul? The developers of the Ripley Town Center, Sekisui House, brought a Japanese design philosophy called Satoyama to the project. Satoyama refers to the traditional zone between mountain foothills and flat arable land, where forests and communities have coexisted for centuries in a sustainable, harmonious balance. In an engineering context, this meant rejecting the idea of a sterile town centre made only of concrete and glass. The vision for Ripley Town Centre was to create a place that felt integrated with nature. The design translates this ancient philosophy into modern urban features. It calls for green corridors that weave through the retail and commercial spaces, connecting parks and residential areas. Water is a central element, with engineered streams and ponds that are both beautiful and functional, forming part of the stormwater management system. The goal is a town centre where the lines between building and landscape are blurred, creating a calming and inviting public space. This focus on well-being and nature is a direct response to the failings of older suburbs, which often lack a vibrant central heart. The first $40 million stage of the town centre is now on track to open in 2026, bringing this unique vision to life. But while engineers were planning this green utopia, they were also dealing with a much darker, hidden legacy just beneath their feet. The beautiful valley was hiding some very ugly secrets. The biggest engineering challenges weren't about building new things, but managing the dangers left behind by the old. The Ripley Valley has a long history of coal mining, and while the major mines had closed long ago, they left behind a web of undocumented tunnels. The official planning documents for the entire region identified a serious risk of mining subsidence. This is the technical term for a sinkhole. An old forgotten tunnel can collapse, causing the ground above it to suddenly give way. For a community planning to build thousands of homes, this was a critical threat. Before any construction could begin, teams of geotechnical engineers had to conduct extensive surveys. They used ground-penetrating radar and drilled countless core samples to map the underground voids. In areas where tunnels were found, they had to be stabilized. This often involved a process called grout injection, where a specialized concrete mixture is pumped into the old tunnels to fill them, preventing any future collapse. It's a slow, expensive and invisible process, but it was absolutely essential to ensure the safety of the future residents. Even more shocking was another hidden danger listed in the planning reports. Unexploded ordnance. Parts of the valley had been used for military training exercises in the past, and there was a risk of finding old, unexploded bombs, mortars or shells. Specialist teams had to sweep the construction zones, carefully searching for and removing any hazardous materials before heavy machinery could move in. These hidden threats, the ghosts of the valley's past, had to be dealt with before the first family could ever call this place home. And the challenges weren't just underground. 
residents moving into the new communities quickly discovered an airborne problem. A persistent, unpleasant smell often drifts across the valley, coming from the nearby Swanbank landfill. It's a long-standing issue that has been the subject of community complaints for years. A project of this magnitude is a huge financial undertaking. The $2 billion figure covers the combined investment in the Providence and Echo Ripley communities. The larger Ripley Town Centre is its own $1.5 billion vision. The entire 40-year development of the whole Ripley Valley is estimated to create a city valued at over $4.4 billion in residential projects alone. This investment comes from major players. Stockland, one of Australia's largest diversified property groups, is managing the massive Providence community. The initial stages of the town centre and Echo Ripley were driven by Sekisui House, a major Japanese developer. More recently, a new developer named Verso has taken over a key part of the town centre's development, showing how these long-term projects evolve over time. The project is moving forward steadily. The Lucas Drive connector road is set to be finished in late 2025, improving local traffic flow. The crucial Providence Parade intersection upgrade is scheduled for completion in September 2025 and a new satellite hospital extension is also planned to open in 2025, providing much-needed healthcare services for the growing population. The vision of a self-sustaining city is slowly becoming a reality. One piece of infrastructure at a time. From a quiet valley to a bustling future city, the Providence Ripley Master Plan is a monumental feat of engineering, planning and persistence. It's a bold attempt to answer one of the biggest questions of our time. How do we build better cities for the future? If you found this look into mega engineering interesting, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more videos like this one. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update and let us know in the comments what massive project you'd like to see us cover next.